let's talk a bit about young companies and building mm. companies, because as you say, Tarragon mm. had a, a sort of good first year and then a very challenging second year. And it wasn't that much in doubt because of Bill's resources, but because you, you assist a lot of young companies helping now, mm -hmm. and a mm -hmm. lot of starting now. How many years can a company try before it actually, how many years should it have a, a try before you pull the plug or call it a success? I think you can, I think they can keep going three years, four years, but it's interesting. They're, they're so different now. Uh, because we had n we, we had nothing to work on and we were n nothing to imitate. I don't think any of us knew quite what we were doing. Uh, we just knew we wanted to do it. Whereas now they've got models, they, they know what they're doing. It's amazing. I'm on a number of boards and a couple of them are new companies. And uh, I'm amazed at how uh, professional they are. I mean, they know exactly how to get started, how to, how to get their board, what to do about fundraising, what models. They, they, all, they all have their board meetings in boardrooms. I mean, if I had walked into a boardroom in the 70s, I would have felt like I'd walked into enemy territory. Whereas here, now, they all do it. And, and, they, and you know, it's, it's interesting. It gives a sense of... Um, uh, order to the to the proceedings. I mean, you may have the same people around the table, you know, artists or not artists or business people, but if they're sitting around a board table, they all suddenly perk up and, you know, they, they, they attend to the business and they, there's an agenda and you, you know, it's this, 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 and this. And uh, these, some of these, some of these artistic directors are in their 20s. They're, they're just out of school. <coughs> but they. So are you saying that's a good thing? This I'm is a kind of board it's a, discipline and corporate mm. discipline. It sounds like corporate discipline is what that is. I, I mean, there's a part of me that thinks, loosen up. <laughs> but on the other hand, they they have to compete against a lot of very uh, established companies, and they do it well. So, you know, if you if you're too loosey-goosey, you might not succeed. Now, of course, there are lots of companies who don't have that, that sort of corporate model to, to work with, but they've all got some structure, it seems to me, in a way that we didn't have. They, they know where they're going, even if they don't have it written down somewhere. So let's talk a bit about that, because the entry level mm. of a new company, mm -hmm. uh, talk about either Theatre Smash coming mm -hmm. and where they're coming, or like Shakespeare works, yep. we, it seemed to me we tried to enter too high, yep. too mm. rich and too high, yep. and we couldn't sustain that. Yeah, uh, I think you did. So how do you as a young company or a young GM or a young artistic director choose the level that you're going to win? Uh, I mean, I think that's one of the things that, uh, well, take Theatre Smash or take Acting Up Stage Company. Um, they really both, both I'd say, because I'm on both boards, and they really have taken great care with what they do and whether they can, whether they can fully fund it before they even begin the rehearsals. They, they were, and so as a result, uh, Theatre Smash has done shows with two people, three people. This play they're doing now will have more, and that's, that's their first big jump. And the same with uh, Mitchell, Marcus. He goes very, very slowly, and now he's got this wonderful musical on that's sold out. But it's, it's taken him you know, four years to get to that point. And he's taken it very slowly, and he always knows that he's got the money before he can continue. So you would say to someone starting a theater, make sure you've got the money before you jump? Make sure you've got the, at least, at least three-quarters of it. Irregardless of ticket sales? Regardless of ticket sales. Wow. So does that then relegate all new companies to two-handers, three-handers, and four-handers? Possibly at first, unless they have some, some, someone backing them. 
It's not, it's not easy. It's really, and I mean, everybody assumes that it's the artists that cost the money. It's, that's, not, that's not really fair. Um, usually it's the rental of the, the theater that you're going into that's the biggest expense. I mean, there are so many other things, it's, but it's getting the audience too. Um, and I think in that case, uh, both, both companies that we've, we've just talked about have been really good at, at, at that work too, going out and finding the people and, and fundraising. Both of them are they're gangbusters at it. Do you think there's too much saturation in the kind of theater market now? Everybody uh, says that, but I, I personally don't think so. <laughs> I think, I mean, something will fall by the wayside. But then it always does, and, and, and I think the more there is, the more there is. Right. You know, it's, it's uh, I mean, we, we, I mean we, give, we give reasons for why things don't work <laughs> with, I mean, we're pretty creative the way we figure out why something's not working. Sometimes we're right, but right. not always. And in terms of the mix of the funding for a new company, the artistic director of a new company, and the management or general management of the new company, which is the most important? Well, that's where, that's where things fall down. And, and obviously, there's not enough funding. But that's, that's again, that's, you know, that's a bigger issue. That's because we, we have a, you know, a culture that we aren't supporting in many ways. But, the, the biggest problem is the fact that you get companies that don't have anyone managing or, or don't have anyone who's uh, got the time to manage properly. So usually you've got an artistic director, someone who has the vision, which is where you have to start, but you don't have anyone to back that vision up and take the burden off that person. So. And, and there, are lots of, there are lots of artistic managers. I'm thinking of Mitchell. Um, and they, they, they are, they're pretty far and f few and far between because he really is a producer. Right. And he, he, that he calls himself that, and he is. And the other two uh, in Theater Smash, they alternate. So when one's directing, the other's being the GM in a way. But that only works for the first few years, and then you really need somebody doing that full time. So how did you and Bill work that out? Well, Bill, of course, he had, he had somebody right from the very beginning, and that was Bernie Bomers. Right. Yeah. And who, who was a madman, but he was a madman with a, with a degree in, in, I don't know whether it was economics, but anyway, he was very, very savvy. Uh, financially, and he was a risk taker, so it was perfect for Bill. I mean, somebody who could hold him down financially, but you know, agree with everything he wanted to do artistically. And I learned from him, and it was uh, it was like going, you know, taking a course. I what sat. What did you learn from? I I I sat. I looked. I know exactly how he how he did. Everything financial that happened at Terrabon, and I was like two feet away from him. And when he left in, I think the third year, I, I there he was. I mean, I, I, I really, I mean, I, maybe I picked it up quickly, but um, and I had been a stage manager, and so I had I had organizational skills, but I didn't know anything about you know audits and finances and and. You know, all, all the nitty gritty, and it was really, really Bernie who gave me my my training, and he set everything up according to the Canada Council uh, application, and it's it's been that way for the well, it was that way for the entire 34 years I was here. I mean, we just I mean, so you we we kind of predated computers in a way because we. We, we modeled everything on, on doing things the easiest way possible. So when you planned a season with Bill, mm -hmm. or Bill plans a season with you, mm. how, do you how do you balance the ambition of the art, art and the resources, as you say, 
of the money before you go. How do those discussions happen? With both Bill and, and, and uh, Erjo, they, they, they tell me what they'd like to do. I tell them how many actors we really can think about hiring. Uh, we, and we bandy back and forth, except, I, and I would say with Bill, he, he, he would fly a little higher. Erjo was very smart. He, he knew exactly. I mean, all we had to say was that, yeah, we can do six plays, seven plays, whatever we were doing, but we really couldn't do more than 36 actors, for instance, over the course of the season. And he would, he would, he would balance it out. Bill would have dreams, <laughs> and you'd have to sort of, uh, I was younger and not as experienced, so you'd kind of go with it. I mean, the Donnellys was a huge risk. And, there, and this is what, of course, I must say, I have to say this, people are always going, you know, we're doing really big shows now, uh, unlike in the first days. And I thought, we used to do shows with 13, 14, 15 people all the time. I mean, obviously they got paid peanuts, but everybody got paid peanuts. Uh, that was the norm. The Donnellys was a, a huge undertaking, and it was successful, but we almost couldn't do the third one. And that was the only time that uh, people talk about the fact that we, we had to go to the Canada Council and beg, but it was the only time that we used that threat that we can't do something because we're not getting the funding. And we invent, eventually did it anyway. This is in the planning of the seasons with the Donnellys. Yeah. It was the third Donnellys that was in trouble because we didn't think we had enough money. Right. We ended up doing it anyway. And I think we found some money as well. But, uh, you know, it, it, I mean, everybody's always saying, if, if I don't get the money, we're going to fold. If I don't get the money, we can't do this production. Sometimes they mean it, and sometimes it's just to kind of push the envelope a bit. So how do your discussions with Bill and Urjo then go? Right? They, they hand you a sheet with, here's uh, eight plays I could choose, and you go and add up the actors and then knock on Bill's Well, you have to do that, sure. I mean, you have to decide whether it's a play that, that's, going to, that's going to take a lot of, of uh, scene changes. I mean, if it's going to, if it's going to be expensive, in, in it's, we finally, in some cases, we, we used to say we banned turntables, because we, every time we had a turntable, the expense went sky high, because they never work, so you always, can, you always find another way to make, the, make, the, make it happen, and it's usually a more expensive way. Uh, so finally we just said, when, with Urjo, we just said no turntables unless you can, ha unless you can do it manually. And uh, it was a way of, you know, sort of, um, ensuring that you're not going to go over budget. And how did the sense of uh, prudence, uh, uh, responsibility, <laughs> uh, come into the tarragon? Because, you know, you watch Robin Phillips at Stratford and you hear the stories of the Exactly, the exactly. Uh, because we didn't want that tension. I, I, I mean, and it didn't stop people from dreaming. I mean, Bill, I mean, Bill did a lot of really fascinating things, the dream play and, the, you know, all these, these shows that he did with Felix Merpt, and he, he, he took a lot of chances. I, I certainly, and I think Bernie too, wanted to take those chances too. So we, we just made it work. I mean, I, I don't remember ever having uh, a knockdown discussion about a play that they had programmed. So was it a collective sense of... Yeah. Yeah. Responsibility. Yeah. yeah. They were both very good at that. And, and uh, I mean, if, if they hadn't been, I wouldn't have stayed as long as I did. Right. I was going to say, mm. if you worked yeah. at Pass Mirai, if you worked at TWP, yeah. you know, yeah. companies yeah. that yeah. skidded along the wall and then got back on If the you didn't the have the passion for it, it, yes, I can imagine you wouldn't stay long. And, and of course, we all stayed everywhere longer than they do now, so. I can't blame people who move on from theater to theater now because that's more the, the norm. Whereas once you got in, you sort of hunkered down and 
there you were.